My name is John McNabb. I'm presenting on vulnerabilities of wireless water meter networks. Uh, I won't read all this, but um, the quick summary is I come from this from a water-centric position. I ran a local water department outside Boston for 13 years. And one of the last things we did when I was there was look at wireless water meters. And to be honest, when we were looking at them and I was pushing adopting wireless water meters, I never thought of security. So after I left, I was thinking, gee, maybe I should look into these things a little more. Last year, I gave a talk here on cyber terrorism and the security of the national drinking water infrastructure, which is a basic overview of physical and cyber uh, uh, vulnerabilities of the entire drinking water infrastructure of the country. Short story is uh, any individual water plant is, is vulnerable for a number of reasons, but the entire infrastructure isn't because it's fragmented. They're not connected like the electric grid is. Uh, but one potential area of entry is, of course, wa any wireless networks that they may have, and this will focus on the wireless water meter networks. I presented this at uh, Black Hat a few days ago, and my white paper, um, part of my white paper is going to be published in a book, Weapons of Mass Destruction and Terrorism, second edition, when it comes out next year. The book is a collection of papers on that topic. Um, and interestingly enough, Hacker Japan was very interested in my talk last year, interviewed me for three hours after my presentation, and I was the cover story in their March 2011 edition. So I'm very popular in Japan, apparently. I tried to read the article, but I don't know what it says about me, so presumably it's positive. <laughs> um, so what this talk is about, water meters, obviously, what they're used for. Um, it's not going to be as much as a deep dive as I said in the abstract. I'll get to that later. Um, but, it's, but I'm looking at what they are, what they're used for, what they could be used for, what the potential avenues of attack are potentially, uh, what the concerns are, the issues involved. And the need for this is that uh, while they're not a major part of water, uh, water departments across the country right now, they're, they're, they're increasing. The use of them is increasing, um, uh, and I'll get into that as well. Uh, uh, I give a very uh, detailed analysis of the overall drinking water infrastructure in my Black Hat white paper, uh, which you can email me. My address is in the first slide. It's also in the last slide. It's on, in, in the PDF in your, in your CD, and I'll send you a copy of the white paper. Okay, the water meter is the cash register, to oversimplify. Um, it's money to the water department. So it's, uh, for you as the homeowner, it's, it's how they determine your water bill. From the previous reading, uh, you know, the difference between the previous reading and the current reading is the amount in gallons or cubic feet, and then it's applied to the water rates, and that's how they determine uh, the usage part of your uh, water bill. Uh, overall, annually, it's about $40 billion a year uh, that water utilities take in, um, mostly from the results from water meters. Not all systems are metered, but in the U.S., most systems are. Strangely enough, in the other parts of the world, water meters are not a common occurrence. But in the U.S., almost every water department has water meters uh, to d determine the usage. The alternative would be a flat rate uh, or a fixture fee, uh, which is a flat rate applied to how many faucets and toilets and so on you have in your house. The disadvantage of that is it doesn't properly account for the usage, and so the, it's harder for the water department to recover the, the cost of producing the water, which is what the water rate is really all about. And I could get into further analysis, which is very interesting when your water commissioner is trying to figure out how to set the rate. You have to set it to not just cover your day-to-day -day expenses, but also for your capital maintenance on an ongoing basis. And that's a big problem nationally as well. Average monthly water, base, water bills range uh, greatly. Um, and there's, there's, uh, it, it depends upon local practices, uh, what the local governmental authority decides to adopt. Um, and there's really no consistency in what rates are across the country. This one? Okay. So what could go wrong? Um, <laughs> um, outside of the fact that meters sometimes just break, uh, they get clogged over years with what we politely call sediment, which could be any solid matter in the water pipes. And, um, and for certain types of meters, that, that can lower the readings. It can slow down uh, the process of, of, of accounting for the water. But there's also theft. Um, uh, elect the electric utilities assume about 10% theft or loss from um, theft or bypassing meters. And there's no similar uh, statistic for the water industry. Um, and again, it would depend upon jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Um, 
So it's theft of services in general, which whatever utility deals with uh, is, is a serious issue because any dollar they don't collect to help recover the cost of operations and capital maintenance, they have to get from somewhere, so it increases the rates for everyone else. Um, and, and also bad practices of meters uh, 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 can, can cause a problem. Uh, Brockton, Massachusetts, for example, uh, just uh, conducted a, the city council had an audit of their water department after the water department uh, realized that over the last 15 years they hadn't been reading the meters properly and that they'd been undercharging people. And so they unwisely decided to give people retroactive bills going back 10, 15 years which I went through that inadvertently in my town, and it's not fun. People do not like retroactive bills, and I think the legality of it's questionable wherever you are. Uh, and they were handing out bills like $90,000, $97,000. So as you imagine, the citizenry got up in arms and got the city council to uh, look into it, and the audit uh, revealed that uh, for 15 years, most of the meters hadn't even been read. They, you could read them. You could send the meter reader around and read them, but they weren't reading them. They're giving estimated bills that had no relation to how much water was going in. And gee, that's why they had fiscal problems. Uh, and they weren't using the billing, billing process properly. So there's a lot the water department can get wrong without you know, uh, malicious third parties getting involved. Uh, clearly, clearly, that's not just the, the, the hackers or the malicious third parties, but um, we'll look at all those issues, actually, uh, in terms of water meters. Uh, very briefly, uh, water meter, I want to do some technical stuff here, I guess, um, but I won't go through all this in detail. Um, the most common type of meter, there's displacement, velocity, ultrasonic, electromagnetic, which are my favorite. We were trying to adopt those in my town because uh, the water just flows through the meter. It's not stopped by a disc that turns around or something that, that uh, detects the velocity of the water. Um, so that the electromagnetic flow meters using Faraday's print law of induction um, are less susceptible to being clogged, as you might imagine. Um, but the most common type used in the United States is a positive displacement meter that uses a new nutating disc, which is just a disc that spins around, and so they know how much is in, the in that area of the water meter that the disc turns around, and every time it turns around, it registers a certain amount which appears on a dial, and there's many different kinds of registers, we call them. Um, this is one common time that base type that basically has an odometer type readout, and then a dial. And after the dial goes around one turn, then it clicks on the, on the, lo on the far right uh, part of the, uh, of the odometer. Um, that's the old, this is the old fashioned historical one that's still out there in millions of uh, homes across the United States um, that uses a mechanical process for both detecting the amount of water and reporting it. Um, this is, uh, you know, generation one, perhaps. Uh, but now there are, you know, we're up to generation three that I'll get to later and some improvements. So data collection methods. I could go into great detail, but we don't need all the detail here. But to make a long story short, eyeball. There's an eyeball right there. So you send a meter reader in. They knock on the door. They go in the house. They go down the basement. They find the water meter. Of course, they've been there before, hopefully, so they know where it is. They get through the stuff in the, in the basement, and they, and they put a flashlight on it, and they read the register. And again, that's still what's being used in millions of homes across the United States. So the, so the, the meter reader has to write it. Usually it's handwritten. They, they have a sheet, and they handwrite it down. And then when they get back, after they do all the, everything in the route, they go back to the plant, and then someone types it in or hands writes it down, and then they type it again. So you get lots of um, opportunity for human error. Uh, you can also have computer error, but this is mostly a human, human error type of problem. Then to get more to computerization, uh, uh, you've got the walk-by. So you attach, even on these older meters, there are like two or three wires you can attach a, a reader to it that then uh, drill a hole and goes to the outside of the building. And we, we call it a gun. It's a handheld computer uh, that's only purpose is to read the meter. So you put the gun on. The, um, the device at the, at the outside of the house, and it electronically downloads the information. And so after the meter reader's done his entire route, so he still has to walk to the house, but he doesn't have to get in. So that reduces the problem of having estimated readings when you can't get into the house, which still occurs. Um, uh, some people don't want to have their meters read for some reason. Then they get, so what we did in my town is we uh, gave them estimated readings of like $5,000, and that got them to come to the water plant to say, hey, what are you doing? And we said, well, we just need to read your meter. And then they say, okay, fine. Um, 
Otherwise, we, keep getting, we can't charge them $5,000, but that's a way of getting their attention. So the town council might have got involved in that, but we didn't have that many, and it, it worked. So we, didn't, so we abated the 5000 and then we you know, give them the, the proper bill. Then there's drive-by, which is getting closer to what we're really talking about. So instead of having the meter reader go to the, put the gun, it sends a signal out that can be reached from the street, or there are varying uh, ranges for these things, and it's just automatically downloaded as they go by. So that's, that's getting us closer to the ideal of a smart meter or meter network, which is our next slide, is a fixed network. And this is what you hear about on the smart grid. The water, like the water smart grid, if you can call such a thing, or the water smart meter is the little sister or brother of the electric smart grid, which is moving faster and being developed uh, more frequently across the country and across the world. Um, so actually to research this, there wasn't much out there on the water smart grid. So I'm adapting a lot of things from the electric uh, smart grid and fixed network architecture, which is basically being modeled, being copied for the for the water and for gas and anything else that um, uh, has you know is a utility uh, pr provision. Um, so instead of having a drive-by, the signal of course goes out everywhere, and depending upon the, the topology and the size of the community, uh, if you're lucky, they can all be received at the at the at the at the administrative headquarters or where the billing. Um, uh, center is located and all be collected there. In most cases, even in small towns, you've got geography problems. Uh, it's, it's tough to, to depend on the signal getting there all the time. You can set up repeaters, you can do a mesh network in the long run, or you basically set up aggregators so that it, Washington DC does this. They have aggregators, so the water, the water meter sends its signal out using RF, radio frequency transmission, and then it goes to an aggregator in the neighborhood or that area of the town of the city of Washington, D.C., and then it's sent by cell phone to the water plant, to, to the billing system. Um, there, there's a lot of different um, uh, means for, for sending the signal uh, automatically. It, RF is the most frequent, but it's also cell phones. Uh, power lines are used uh, by electric utilities, obviously, but for some reason are not used in water in the U.S. Uh, as a means of, uh, of sending a signal. That's another possibility. Cable is another one. Um, so without getting into the technicalities of the different means, um, I'm going to be focusing a little later on on the most common one, which is radio frequency, um, which is also one hopefully we can, we can do something with. Um, the other key thing about the fixed network is that it, it can allow two-way communication. Now, with electric systems, um, smart grids, uh, that gets very interesting when you also add to it a home area network, uh, which might have been talked about in the talk previous to this that I wasn't able to see because I was getting ready for this. But uh, home area networks are very interesting because every it's the Internet of Things. Everything, every electric appliance in the house has an IP address or is connected to a central controller that the homeowner can, can presumably control, but also the utility can control to um, turn things on and off. To uh, you know, to deal with um, power surges or uh, uh, re reduce reduce the use of things that aren't actually being used uh, when when they're when they've got a heavy load, things like that. No, no one's really talking about that for water for obvious reasons because you, you, you basically it's mechanical uh, issues. You can't really do the same thing. But it it, it gets into interesting questions um, that I'll get to a little later. Um, so the topology uh, isn't very interesting. It's probably conceptually a star, um, and, but the key thing is two-way communication. Um, so suddenly your water bill can be read almost any time. Uh, instead of every quarter with the, with the drive, but with the walk by, with the eyeball or the, or the walk by, or even the drive by, it can be monthly, it can be daily, it can be hourly, uh, every five, five minutes. You can, you can put any household, any, any, anybody on your network on any schedule you want, basically. Uh, the trick is, you know, how much information you want to get, and do you really know what you're going to want to do with it? Uh, so, so that gets us a lot of advantages in terms of information collection. The benefits of the AM, okay, these terms, AMR, automatic meter reading, AMI, advanced metering infrastructure, and smart grid are sort of uh, fluffy. They, they go, it's, it's, you could be talking about one when someone else thinks you're talking about the other. Automatic meter reading is mostly, uh, could be, could be the, the walk-by. Uh, that's not really advanced metering infrastructure, um, but we're going to focus from now on on the fixed network system, which is uh, smart grid or uh, AMI for water. So it lowers the, lowers the meter reading cost. 
It theoretically owes better accuracy, even though that's what they say. In many cases, you'll see if you do some research like I did that a lot of people have higher bills or the bills don't make any sense uh, with the, electric, with the uh, wireless readings. Um, it's better for the water utility in terms of helps resolve bill disputes because the computer never lies. You can just see that that's what the computer said. Uh, and better customer service in terms of if someone comes back from vacation and they think they had a leak, the, someone at the plant can actually look at, here's what the readings were while you were away or while they're home. It, it, it's more information that can be used uh, to help the, help the consumer better understand what they're using for water. Uh, maybe, um, you know, help them do better water conservation. Do, it helps the water utility uh, keep better track. Um, these, these two charts on the right are very interesting in terms of showing examples of how the water utility can use the information even on a daily basis on the top graph. Um, so the, wa the water utility has an outdoor watering restriction. And see that black line? That's when someone evaded it by turning, you know, by, by putting your automatic sprinklers on uh, in violation of the restriction. So right before you have the automatic uh, meters, you'd have, you could find that out if you drove around and you know, saw that, that that was on. Um, and you could do something about it, but that's, you can't catch them all that way. This is an easier way of doing it. You could presumably set up the software to give you, give you an alert uh, for that. And then leak detection is the main reason why I was pushing forward in my uh, water department years ago was that um, uh, if, it, if you set it for daily or hourly or, you know, pick an interval, uh, at some point, if there's no leak, it's going to be, it's going to go to zero at some point because there are many times when no one's flushing a toilet, no one's turning a faucet, uh, you're not running the washing machine or the or the dishwasher, um, so if, so if it never goes to zero, you suspect there's a leak, and you can go further from that. So um, it, it's get a lot of uses to the water utility, uh, and the growth uh, right now going to the um, to the second to last bullet. Only about seven percent of water utilities in the United States have what we we call smart meters, the AMI, the uh, wireless water meters that we're talking about. Um, but looking at the studies that have come out, looking at the entire smart grid for water, gas, electric, um, it, it's, it's, it's projected to explode, to make major increases in the next 10 years. Um, and, and that's mainly because it, California is ahead of the curve because they have a state mandate to uh, reduce a water consumption 20% by the year 2020, which is uh, quite a chore, actually. Um, I mean, after you eliminate water, you know, unnecessary water uses like uh, watering lawns, um, it, it gets tough to um, fine tune the water use. And so some of the, so this, would, this is a useful tool for the water utility and for the um, homeowner in California uh, to, to keep track of the water use and, um, you know, reduce it as much as they can. Um, so looking at the information that we're talking about, you know, what, what are the benefits digging deeper for the information that the water utility can get. So obviously it's part of the billing record. That's what it's for. That's the major reason it's for. Um, leak loss analysis, uh, but also allows them to, to look at the, the usage. So when's the peak usage? What part of town uses the peak, does a peak usage come from? Maybe there's an issue there they can look at. Um, maybe it helps them plan the running of the plant and the, and the withdrawal of water from the source if they know better what the peaks and the valleys are uh, hour to hour, uh, minute to minute uh, throughout the water district. Uh, conservation, I mentioned a few times. Uh, feedback directly uh, to the consumer, so there's a potential benefit for the consumer. And a lot, this is from a report from California, and, and it's, it's, it's almost essential in California for the utilities to tell the state what they're doing or not doing to meet the mandate. So, summing it all up, uh, the wireless water meter is an embedded device. Uh, it's a node in a sensor network I'll, I'll get to. It's a data information collection device. That's why I'm, I'm talking about it at, at, a, at an IT security conference. It's not just a mechanical device that, re talks about, that deals with water. It's, it's an information collection device. It's an electronic cash register uh, now instead of the old metallic one that uh, I showed in an earlier slide. And it allows, allows for better conservation. And of course, could it be Big Brother? So. Uh, it's hard getting a handle on, um, you know, looking at a water meter because there's so many different kinds. There's about 20, over two dozen uh, manufacturers. That pie chart is from a study looking at uh, some estimates of market share. Itron and Neptune are the biggest ones. Uh, there's also Census, um, Badger, um, Hexagram. Those are ones that I've done some research on. 
uh, but it's a big field to try to get a handle on because there, there's a, you know, at least this many manufacturers, they have different models, they have different types of meters. Some of them are, are the transceivers that can go on an existing meter. Some are ones that were the transceivers built in already to the meter. Um, so there's a lot of variety here um, because there's no standards really. Um, they, 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 well, the standard, they need to meet the American Water Works Association standards for proper operation of a water meter. But as far as I know, that doesn't address the wireless portion or a lot of the issues that I'm talking about. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, they, they can deal with a lot of different transmission methods, phone lines, cable, power lines, radio frequency, or a combination of the two. And again, the most prominent one, predominant one is power lines. Just checking my time. So looking into, uh, you know, how, how are they put together, what is the te te technology and the engineering used, and again, I won't read all this, but patent information is very, very useful. Um, so I bought a couple uh, water meters on eBay and transceivers, and uh, one of the ones I got was a Census MXU Model 550, and they're very helpful in actually printing the uh, patent number on the outside of the, of, of the casing. So I took the thing apart, and I, I'm afraid to say I didn't get very far, but I took it apart, identified, you know, as much as I could what the different parts were, and here they're described. We've got an Intel 8050 family integrated circuit, We've got a one kilobit um, EEPROM. Uh, it gives the description in the third bullet for what the interrogation mode is, what information is sent out and received. Um, so I'm still going through this patent and, um, and some other ones and trying to pick a number of water meters to really um, dig into. Um, but you can see it's mostly off-the-shelf components. No one, n not many people are designing specific hardware, software for the water meter. Uh, they're using off-the-shelf chips, uh, uh, processors, uh, EEPROMs, and transceivers, as it turns out. Um, so looking generally in part of my research, I realized that a water AMR, AMI, smart meter, smart grid is a, is a type of wireless sensor network, which is a large network of resource-constrained sensor nodes with a multiple preset function, such as sensing and processing. Um, so the sensor node, of course, is the water meter. Um, and the major characteristics of a water meter and a sensor node in a wireless sensor network is low pro power processing, processor, and that's true in our case, low energy. They have batteries that are usually good from five to 20 years. There are some models coming out now that actually, you know, plug in and use AC power, but for the most part they use batteries because you never really know where it's going to be placed when you produce it. And even if it's someone's basement, you can't guarantee there's going to be an AC power, power uh, near it. So they, they depend on battery power. So it's low energy and small memory. One kilobit, you know, sometimes you can have four kilobits of uh, EEPROM. So not much you can do here with software, perhaps. Um, so in looking at water, wireless sensor networks in general, um, there's a lot of literature on this uh, you can get off the web. Um, a lot of um, computer scientists uh, looking at uh, what are wireless sensor networks, what are the potential attacks, what are the potential defenses, and it's really a taxonomy of all the, you know, everything that we're used to and looking at for networks, at active versus passive, outsider versus inside, um, mo class versus, mo class is attacking from a, an actually sensor node or water meter. Um, so. I think a laptop class is probably more useful where you're using a laptop with the right receiver and software and you, you're getting into the network. So the things of bad things you could do are interrupting the signal. In, in, again, this is in general for water sensor networks. Interception, modification, replay. And the countermeasures, um, again, in general, but it applies here as well, basically boils down to authentication, encryption. Um, which you don't see in a lot of uh, low power, low memory, low processing uh, ability uh, wireless nodes. And again, that's the case we see in water meters as well. So why would anybody want to hack into a water meter? I mean, you know, um, that's really what started my questioning, you know, looking into this is, you know, what, what, how could you abuse this? Um, and it's maybe not as interesting as an electric meter or some of the other things, many of the other things that people at this conference talk about, but there, there are things that need to be looked into. Could you reduce your water bill? Could you increase someone else's water bill? Could you steal water, the theft of service, which right now is being done so well in many u utilities by uh, just mechanical means? Uh, I mean, the good old-fashioned method, you put the meter in backwards. We see that occasionally. 
you bypass the meter. So you get someone who knows how to do plumbing and you just go around the meter. You find that a lot out there. Uh, but this is a more sophisticated way, if it can be done, to actually, you know, do a man in the middle potentially and, and, and give the wrong information to the water department. Evade water restrictions. Very important thing. In, in my community, uh, when you had water restrictions, people get very hot under the collar that they can't water their lawn. And uh, they, some of them think they have a, they have a God-given right to water their lawn and use the water. And the water department usually doesn't mind because they're paying for the water and they can afford to pay for the water. Uh, but again, if you have a water restriction because you have a low, uh, you have a problem with the supply, you don't really, you, you, everyone's got to obey it. So, um, so if you want to evade the water restrictions and you want to gamble that someone's not, from the water department's not going to drive by and see that you're, you're doing that with the outside sprinkler, you just, you know, if you can do it, you, you, you change what the readings that they get from your wireless water meter and they're, they're none the wiser. Could it be used for surveillance of human activity in the home? Um, and I, I deal with, with, with the top ones uh, in some, some uh, degree a little later in here. The unanswered questions are, could you use it to get into the uh, SCADA system, the control system that runs the plant? That's a very interesting question, since we know from talks at Black Hat and other talks here and stuff in the news and, and, and uh, viruses like Stuxnet uh, that, um, that the, control, the control systems, and that's what, that, the second, that's what that picture is, that's the control system at my plant, um, which was running on an XP, uh, uh, SP2 machine, I believe, uh, unpatched. Uh, um, and that's usually what you find because they're, they, they think they're off the Internet so they don't have to apply, you know, uh, patches and virus protection and so on. That would just get in the way. Um, so it would be interesting if, um, so, the, so the wireless water meter network only goes into the billing system, right? And the billing and the office system is never connected to the SCADA system, right? Well... Actually, about half of them are. Uh, in, in polling, it's been done in the last couple of years or not. So it's, but it's, I don't, I don't know the answer to the question. Yet. It's a further, further uh, research into whether that's a potential entry into um, that, that screen right there and, 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 and changing the operation of the plant. Could you use it to get into other smart grid networks? Uh, there's a move to integrating uh, water and gas uh, smart grids into electric. And uh, you could get a lot more bang for your buck if you're hacking into um, uh, the water system, if you could also hack into the electric or the gas and, and, and do something nefarious there. So again, that's another question that uh, is further down the line. So what could the evil consumer do? Theft of services. So we all know about the uh, illegal cable descramblers, uh, which bypass the, uh, the, the, the legal system that you're supposed to pay for. Uh, also, there have been news reports that in China, people are getting arrested for uh, creating a, a device and I can't get much information on this. If anybody knows how to get one, I'd like to see one. Um, but it's presumably a box of some point that, that either goes on your electric meter in China or there's a man in the middle. They're not, they're not describing it very much and lowers your, water, lowers your electric rates. Uh, so see, could somebody you know, attack the wireless water meter system and, and you know, presumably with a box that someone like us would build um, and, and lower their water rates or, or give you control over everything that's being told to the water utility so you could evade the water restrictions or, you know, um, you know again, low, you know, steal, money, steal money from the water department and steal water. It's both. So the effect of the water utility is, is bad, of course, they, especially if they don't notice it, that suddenly the revenues are going down, their, their, their master meter at the plant shows they're still sending out the same amount of water, more or less, but they're getting less revenue for the same amount of water going out. Gee, maybe there's a lot of leaks out there. Maybe there's a lot of illegal connections. Um, so so it's, it's a possibility. Um, of course, it can be detected because even the wireless water meters have a, a register that you can, usually it's an LCD at this point for the uh, more modern ones, where you can go down and actually physically read it. And then presumably you could, on some of the models, you can go to it and download directly from the meter what the readings were. And, and get a better idea. So there's, there's a way around it for the water utility, but if, if a lot of people are doing this, it's, it's hard to, hard to uh, uh, find out and control. Uh, could it be used for terrorists or adversaries uh, trying to do damage? Uh, so I'm just speculating here. Could it be used to uh, collect information to help them build a hydraulic map, save the water system? Because in my talk last year and in my white paper, um, the, the current state of analysis of potential physical security problems for water utilities 
are that the most vulnerable part of a water utility is, is the dis distribution system, where it's not monitored, really. You get hundreds of miles of pipes. You get hundreds, if not thousands, of, of fire hydrants in a big city. You get hundreds of thousands of connections and valves and blow-off areas where someone can get into the system. And it's relatively easy if you know the hydraulics of the system, and you know, you know, so you know what's going to happen, that you can inject uh, poison into the water system at a sufficient pressure to overcome the pressure of the system, and then um, uh, you know, spread poison throughout the city. Um, now, the, so that's a question. That's still a question. Um, more information is always useful if you're going to do an attack, obviously. So that's just a question. Um, disruption is more likely uh, in a lot of places like California that are serious about water conservation, uh, but, in, uh, but also in other places that want, it, want an easy way to turn water on and off remotely, uh, say when an apartment dweller comes and goes or a seasonal, um, uh, for somebody has a seasonal rental and, they, and you need to turn the water on, on when they, someone comes and turn it off when they leave, there's something called water cop is one brand name. It attaches near the meter and it can be remotely turned the water on and off. So that may or may not be on the backhauled on the same signal as the water meter, but there you go. There's a whole other area of, um, of uh, attack. So, for example, you know, what if you could shut off the water? That's not poisoning the water, but it's uh, definitely a serious disruption. Um, now, uh, the, the major threat that uh, conceptually that water utilities are facing from terrorists are poisoning the water supply. Al Qaeda has threatened many times to do so. People question whether they have the capability to do that and whether it's high on their list, but it's definitely something they've, they've, they've threatened. Uh, water meters don't really help them in that regard unless there's a recon uh, uh, component to it. But uh, the smart grid uh, for electricity is very wormable, as somebody said. I don't know if that's a word, but uh, Thanasis Gia Netzos uh, gave a talk at Black Hat Spain last year where he developed a uh, wireless sensor attack tool called Census, uh, for, again, for electric grid primarily, and it's, it's for 2.5 gigahertz uh, 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 transmissions. Um, and it's a very sophisticated tool um, that, that he demonstrated to spread a worm through an electric grid. IOActive did something similar. Uh, they presented a Black Hat USA 2009. And this is a picture at the bottom from the, you can go into YouTube and you can see their demonstration. So all the green dots or nodes are the unowned um, nodes on the electric grid and the red ones are the ones that are owned. And it's great, you can run the thing and it starts all green and then it turns all red. Uh, it was simulated, he didn't do it, they didn't do it in a real environment obviously. So no one's done that for, for the water grid yet, um, but uh, it's a lot of the same off the shelf hardware and software, it's a lot of the same um, uh, techniques, so it could be just as wormable. Um, but the biggest concern that I've seen out there um, that we need to consider is Big Brother, the evil water utility. So even if there's no adverse third parties out there, no one's trying to poison the water or shut it off, some people are concerned that now the water department's going to know more about what you do. I know as formerly running a water department, I don't really care what you do. I want to know how much water you're using so I can charge you the right amount. But this, th these quotes are from the Cary, North Carolina Watchman, uh, uh, a newspaper that's online. And um, so they're concerned that information about our private lives will be known to the uh, water department staff. You know, when you take a shower, when you water the plants, wash the dishes. Honestly, when I was starting to do this research, I didn't think this was a big thing. But when you look into it, there are a lot of people perhaps legitimately concerned that private information is going to leak out now, the water utility is going to know it, obviously. I don't know, if, you know why they'd use it except, of course, to enforce conservation. So if they see, hey, Joe, you're, you're flushing the toilet five, six times a day. Uh, I don't want to know why, but you know, can you cut that down? <laughs> Maybe they do, do know why. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a concern that people have, however legitimate it is, but it may be legitimate. Um, so this chart is... Um, developed from a chart and a report uh, on privacy with the electric smart grid. So I just changed any, any, any time I said the word electric to water. Um, and again, this is speculation. I haven't looked into each of these things in detail. But uh, so what, what is the water meter data 
used, could it, be, could it be used for? So here's the hacker thought. We know it's, you know, we know it's supposed to be for, to, to, you know, the primary purpose is to determine the bill to raise revenue to be the cash register. That's the first um, line here. Uh, water conservation. So what if a company that sells water conservation devices uh, gets the data and they find out that this area of the city just isn't doing it for water conservation? Whatever reason, they're just using too much water. The city's getting down on them, they're finding them, and the city just isn't doing it. But they get the data and they get all the names and addresses of everyone who's violating the regulation and just isn't listening. It's just is, is using, using too much water. So that's your marketing, that's your mailing list or your email list. You send it out and say, hey, I got this device that'll let you comply with the city's regulations. Uh, insurance companies, marketers, I just mentioned, law enforcers. I was discussing with someone at Black Hat about, gee, you know, could it be used for like a search warrant? Um, like if you're making meth in the house, that uses a lot of electricity and water. I can't find any examples that, where that's been done, but he said he heard about something in the Bay Area of, of San Francisco where that, or California where that may have been used. It did? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's happened. Um, um, there's cases where electric use has been used by, by um, enforcers and, and uh, also thermal imaging is a big case that's um, talked about a lot. Uh, landlords, private investigators. So what if you're in a custody battle, you've got your daughter, you know, you've kidnapped your daughter and you're, I'm not condoning any of this, you know, you're, or, you know, you've got her in the house and you're telling everyone, no, she's not here. And they look at the water use and they realize he's, he's, it's just too much water for one guy, you know, and they use that as evidence. I'm just speculating here. But, but the thing is that the, the wireless water meters are about 7% of the utilities in Southern California. So a lot of this hasn't happened yet, but, in, but it will. Uh, especially if this information is created and is out there and is stealable, like almost other, like credit card information. Creditors, criminals. So uh, again, I think, I think in most cases the electricity information is much more useful, but what if you don't have that, but you got the water information. So you look at, so you're, you're, you're casing out this house, this, this rich house, and, you, and, and all, you, all you can get is the water information. You're stealing it off the wireless water meter, and you see, okay, shower, you know, you're seeing 100, 100 gallons per person a day, then it goes down to zero. Of course, you, there's other ways to find out if someone's not there, but you never know for sure. So if you see the water use go down to zero or near zero, then you have a clue. So I don't think we're being paranoid. I mean, a lot of us here are concerned about security and, and, um, and privacy, and this is clearly a, a potential uh, privacy issue uh, where it's implemented. But it gets better. Uh, there's a device called HydroSense that uh, uh, researchers in uh, Seattle area, uh, University of Washington, have come up with, which is a simple, cheap, uh, low power device. You just attach it, not necessarily, not on the water meter, but on any pipe in the house. And it's wireless, so it could go over this back haul over the same signal that the water meter uses or not. And it can detect, it can find out after like a you know, after um, syncing it and, and checking it over a couple days, it can tell what fixture was turned on and on and, and for on and off and how long. Um, fascinating. Um, there's a whole body of stuff out there. I could give a whole talk next time about uh, remote sensing of human activity in the home. There's all these researchers who are just dying to find out how can we find out what you're doing in your house without actually entering it. And as far as I can tell, they're being funded by the government. It doesn't appear to be the CIA or the NSA, but who knows? Um, so, this, so since these guys came up with HydroSense a few years ago, uh, other enterprising researchers have been, been improving it. So there's one called Water, which is self-powered by the water going through the pipe, I guess, or the vibration of the pipe. Then there's one that I probably don't have on this slide that, um, that actually attack, that is, uses the water meter because the, to plus, I can't pronounce that, that law, the, the equation they use, uh, it, parts, you know, it uses the, the, the amount of water being, going through the system, the, the, the flow, to identify. It, it can go either backwards or forwards with the flow to the pressure hammer, to the change in pressure from turning something on or off. Um, so they take, so, that, so this new generation of HydroSense um, takes information from the meter and a vibration sensor on the pipe nearby. And, and then it can do, find out the same information. So all these people worried about privacy from the water department just knowing how much water the whole house was using. Well, guys, they can find out what you're using and when. And that could be potentially very interesting. So there's a lot, a lot of rich research in this area. They're looking at it for gas, um, which is 
obviously a more limited amount of appliances, you know, stove and, you know, uh, water heater, um, you know, dryer, uh, perhaps other things, uh, but also electricity, which you don't really need if you get the home area network because that's already doing all that. But what if you don't have a home area network and there are, thing, there are, there are devices you can attach in your, for your electric uh, grid in the house that do something similar? So it's just fascinating how, how much development there is in trying to find out what we're doing in our houses without us knowing it. Um, so that really blew my mind when I said, oh, well, people are worried about privacy from just knowing how much water they use. Well, now they should really be worried if these things are attached. And these things can be attached surreptitiously, too. I mean, they're not, they're not, uh, you can just, if you can get into the house, you can attach this, set it up, power it on, and it'll, it'll be working. So in general, though, other vulnerabilities, um, looking at wireless water meters in general, um, one, one vendor tells us what frequencies they transmit on and tells us that there's no uh, frequency hopping sped spectrum, which is their, their usual method of encryption or security, uh, which breaks up the signal. So, it, you know, one, one, some packets will go on one, one sub-frequency, then another one, and there are different um, sp spectrum uh, schedules that they go out on that are pseudo-random, that only the, the sender and the receiver are supposed to know. Um, Badger gives out its default network username and password and its wireless key. So I might go after them first. Um, transceivers can be purchased on eBay. I've got five or six at home I'm working on. So you can, I'm trying to actually find the same one that I have at my house so I can take one apart and then, you know, apply that information to actually uh, the sniffing. But most of them don't have encryption. Uh, so, uh, most of them don't have frequency hopping sped spectrum, which I briefly described, or DSSS, which is a similar uh, technique to obscure the message, which again was, both of these were developed in World War II as a encryption quote unquote type method. Um, but, the, but the good news is, while most of the manufacturers don't have encryption or good security, there are now more, uh, more and more that are coming out with it. For example, uh, one manufacturer refers to them as third generation, and here's a diagram of them here, uh, where um, they don't need a battery. They reduce the amount of electricity to the minimum to only when they, not when they read the signal, read the amount of water, but when they transmit it to the register, which then goes out all over wireless, and they get it from uh, the, the AC current in the house. Um, and it's all built in. It's all one unit. A lot of water departments now are adding on the transceivers. Um, and it's always a trick, you know, what model, you know, getting the models to match up and so on. And instead of having a mutating disk that mechanically, you know, goes around and around and then, uh, you know, goes to the register, they have a, it's, it's a purely electronic um, system. Um, and there's at least one manufacturer I found that actually says they have AES 128-bit and 256-bit encryption. Uh, that's not common at this point, but it, it's, we're seeing them now for like the first time. There's still a lot of them out there that say frequency hopping sped spectrum is, is, is for security, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, most of them are 900 megahertz, the 902 to 928 ISM uh, scientific band, uh, which makes it hard. I was hoping, I'll get to this in the second to last slide, to, show, to sniff a wireless water meter, and I haven't been able to do it because it's kind of hard to find off the shelf or even things I can put together easily to sniff 900 megahertz, mainly because that's cell phones, and I don't want to do, you know, wiretapping. So um, I'm working on it. Um, but most use 900 megahertz and frequency hopping sped spectrum. Okay, so there are two researchers who have done uh, proof of concepts uh, or, or better for sniffing uh, frequency hopping sped, spread spectrum transceivers. Atlas, Atlas Cutaway and Q, I believe they're from In Guardians at Shmukon 2011. Um, sh uh, talked about this in great detail and showed how using a, a CC1111, uh, you know, 900 megahertz uh, model kit, uh, uh, they were able to crack the frequency hopping sped spectrum um, and, and read the signal. And Rob Havalt, um, who's speaking tomorrow morning, I guess, uh, on uh, spiders taking over the earth is what the title is, uh, Black Hat Europe uh, uh, cracked it as well using a uh, universal... Um, uh, USRP, software radio peripheral, he used the, the peripheral two that he told me he set to, re, to listen in all uh, frequencies at the same time. And, and because uh, in this uh, 
in, in the signals he was listening to, they used the same management frames that you see in 8211. He was able to wait to find the management frame that told him the schedule for the frequency hopping, which was in the clear, of course, and then feed that back to some software he wrote to, um, to, to, to intercept it. So I haven't ponied up for a $1,500 USRP V2 yet, but when I do, I'll talk to him and, and replicate his method. That's not the easiest way to do it. I'm trying to come up with a low cost way, um, and, but at least a way to start to actually see what, what's going on there. And I, I alluded a couple times, I was hoping to come here and say, here's how I sniffed uh, my water meter, but I couldn't do it. Um, I tried some, what looked, some ones that looked easy first, like the Amtel RZ600, which actually is advertised to listen in a number of frequencies and to have sniffer software for it, and it, they don't. So the next one is FunCube Dongle Pro, which, which comes out of uh, England, um, and that's a software radio peripheral for like 64 to 1700 megahertz. Uh, but I got that like a week ago and I haven't had tried to configure it yet. So I'm looking at a number of other things as well, um, and, and hopefully that'll be, that'll be my talk next year at ShmooCon uh, earlier in the year, because it's, it's possible to do this, but because it's 900 megahertz, it makes it, they make it really hard. Um, but the point is it's not impossible. People have cracked FHSS before, and of course there, are, there is hardware to read 900 megahertz. So I'm going to be, be working on putting it together and show proof of concept, hopefully for a man in the middle attack. And wrapping up, I got the, uh, uh, the hook a few times. Water meters are an integral part of the national drinking water infrastructure. I won't read the rest of it, but the bottom line for my research is the, ma the major concern is privacy and surveillance whether or not you have hydrosense. If you have hydrosense, that ups the ante quite a bit. Uh, tampering with water meters is already something going on. This gives the bad guys or the homeowners yet another way to do it. And so again, the purpose of this talk is to reveal what I know about vulnerabilities. So hopefully the manufacturers and the industry can, can use better practices and secure them so we won't have um, these vulnerabilities turn into real problems. And, and finally, this is a growth industry for water utilities as well as for hackers and evildoers. And if anybody wants my white paper where I talk more about this stuff in depth, email me at johnmcnabb at comcast.net. Thank you.